In this video, I'm gonna reveal how to get unbelievable efficiencies out of any cylinder you're working with simply by controlling how you heat it. The first tip is to lower your hot water temperature to as low as is safe for your situation. It makes no sense to overheat a cylinder only to mix the water back down with cold water again when you bath or shower. The benefits of keeping your cylinder cooler are that it will lose less heat and the heat source can heat the cylinder with a much cooler flow temperature, provided you follow the other tips in this video. There is a very small risk of Legionnaire's disease in some specific scenarios here, so please watch our Legionnaire's video before just randomly adjusting the store temperature, and this will teach you how to select the lowest possible safe store temperature. Every degree you can lower your store temperature drags the flow temperature required by your heat source down by one degree C. One degree C reduction in flow temperature is 3% efficiency gain on a heat pump. Personally, I feel totally safe to have my hot water at 45 degrees C, so by taking my store temperature down from 50 to 45, increases the heat pump efficiency by 15%. That's on top of the savings from the reduced standing losses into the surrounding environment by having a cooler cylinder. All controllers will allow you to set your hot water temperature, but the ultimate controller for a hot water cylinder doesn't exist yet. It would, however, be very easy to make. To ensure I store at the lowest possible store temperature, I've personally installed a water meter to my cylinder at home. This could ensure my cylinder is warm enough so I don't run out of hot water as it will know my usage. If my hot water usage drops off, I can turn off my hot water heating. Or if I have warm stagnant water sitting for a long time, I can activate a high temperature Legionella cycle to take my cylinder to 60 degrees to kill any bacteria before turning the cylinder off for lack of use. This could also vary the store temperature depending on electricity price and hot water usage. Or if you have cheap power, you could sacrifice your efficiency for money savings and store the water at a higher temperatures. Or if, for example, you have solar and a battery, when your battery is full and you start exporting power, you could increase the store temperature gradually to drink up that free energy. If you watch the first video, you'll see that a larger store volume will give you nearly double the capacity if you take your cylinder up to 70 degrees. Bear in mind, if you do take your cylinder up to 70 degrees, you will need scold prevention fitted to the cylinder. This is vastly more efficient and cheaper than putting heat into your cylinder via a 100% efficient immersion. If combined with an ultimate hot water cylinder from part one of this video, you could also rapidly reheat the cylinder if ever required. What we need is a controller that varies the temperature of the cylinder and the amount of heat energy stored in the cylinder depending on price of electricity and hot water usage. To ensure storing at the lowest temperature but not risking Legionnaires, I personally have installed a water meter and this could be used in conjunction with this control to help store at the most accurate temperature without risking Legionnaires or risk running out of hot water. It is possible to cobble something together that kind of does this, but I would love it if a manufacturer made a ready-made version for us. It could and should also incorporate the other suggestions in this video for maximum efficiency, and could also just be done with manufacturer's APIs. Since making this video and our Mixergy review video you can see here, Mixergy cylinders have been in touch. Mixergy are now developing this exact solution. Their HeatGeek control feature, which will lower their minimum store temperature to below 50 degrees C and use clever learning algorithms based on measured usage to store hot water at the lowest temperature you are comfortable with. This will maximize heat pump efficiency, increase the cylinder efficiency and increase your energy savings overall, but also allows more storage volume or charge volume to charge the tank to much higher temperatures when energy is cheap or free. Not only that, they've also updated their hardware, such as upgrading their plate heat exchanger and replacing their resistor switch, which used to prevent some of the benefits of these heat pump control features. This pass-through sensor allows these features, such as the Wiesmann minimum offset feature I'm about to go into, to fully maximize efficiency. Great work, Mixergy. This could possibly make Mixergy the most efficient cylinder out there, and I I can't wait to find out. Visit Mixergy's website to find out more details in the description. So that's the first point, minimize the store temperature. Next is to look for your target flow temperature setting from the heat source when in hot water mode. In the Valent, you can set your target temperature differential. So if your cylinder temperature is set to 50 degrees C and your differential temperature is set to 20 degrees C, 
then your heat pump would try to target 70 degrees flow temperature throughout the entire heat up of the cylinder. I've turned mine personally down to zero to make sure the heat pump holds back and stays cooler. Viesman have a similar option, however can track the current cylinder store temperature. So if you set the Viesman controller to five degrees differential, when the store is at 30 degrees, the heat source will target 35. And when the store gets to 35, the heat source will target 40 degrees flow temperature, which is much more advanced and obviously preferable. Next is to set the best time to heat your cylinder. The most efficient time to start your hot water cycle for an air source heat pump is about 2 p.m. This is when the air temperature outside is at its highest and will mean your heat pump will have to work less hard to achieve the same store temperature. This would also be a nice addition to the ultimate hot water control I mentioned earlier. Adjusting this heat up for the warmest time of the day will always give you the highest efficiency. Next comes your super geeky parameter settings. Now, I would strongly recommend that only installers adjust these last settings, as heat pumps can be fickle, and you will be charged to correct these if you mess an installation's controls up. So please proceed with caution. In our ultimate cylinder video linked in the description, we talked about two key theories taught in our online heating theory training. The first is the distortion factor, which is how much hotter the heat source's flow temperature needs to be above the hot water store temperature in order to transfer heat into the store. The higher this is, the lower the efficiency of our heat source is. And the other theory is the heat source saturation point. This is where we make the heat exchanger so powerful in relation to the heat input that the heat source is no longer in control of its own flow temperature. Once your heat exchanger gets to a certain size, the heat exchanger outstrips any heat energy the heat source puts in right the way through the heat up. So the heat source can't get up to its target temperature. Now this heat source saturation point isn't actually a binary point. The lower below the heat source saturation point we go, the lower our distortion. In fact, our distortion is fixed until we get to this point, then the distortion begins to shrink. We can effectively go even further past our heat source saturation point by changing some settings. Because this point is to do with the ratio of the power available at the heat source versus the potential power available at the cylinder's heat exchanger, if we restrict the heat pump or boiler's power output, the distortion will have to shrink as the heat source is even further outstripped of energy. This gives us even lower flow temperatures and even higher efficiencies. To lower the heat output of a boiler, look for a range rating setting in the manual. For heat pumps, there's less likely to be a range rating setting, but there are other settings that basically do the same thing. Valent has hot water eco mode, which restricts the power output of the heat pump during hot water, or balanced mode, which restricts it until a certain temperature to gain efficiency. The other option to reduce the power output on a Valent is the noise reduction mode. You can use this timer to reduce the heat pump output by between 60 and 35% during your hot water heat up periods. Your heat pump may not have these exact settings, so you may have to look for any equivalent settings that allow you to reduce your heat pump output during hot water heat up. Now the downside of reducing your heat output from the heat source is the length of time the hot water cylinder takes to heat up. Now all this advice assumes you have weather compensated heating. If you don't, this has an even bigger impact on savings and you should absolutely implement it. When a weather compensated system does hot water, it turns off the heating. Now there is a worry that lengthening hot water times will cause the house to cool down or drop down in temperature too much. But unlike traditional on off heating, this is highly unlikely as with steady state heating, the walls and pipework have already drunk up a lot more energy. So the homes are much less likely to drop in temperature for the vast majority of the year. And of course, remember every property is different. So you may have to play around with your specific hot water times to see what works best for your house. Older properties with more thermal mass will be much less affected by temperature drops, despite often having less insulation. Where this really could become an issue though, is when the outside temperature drops below about four degrees Celsius and you have a heat pump. If you set your hot water to take extreme amounts of time, say above two or three hours, the house will take longer to recover here and also risk your heat pump going into a spiral, trying to constantly catch your house back up, which will absolutely affect efficiency and possibly cause your house to drop in temperature. I had this exact issue in my house not too long ago while experimenting with my heating and hot water settings. And for this reason, you might want to increase your hot water power in the winter. 
There is also a setting in the valent control to force your heating on after an adjustable amount of time of hot water heat up. More on that whole issue in a specific video coming soon. So in summary, watch our Legionnaires video and set the lowest safe possible store temperature. Look for the flow temperature setting in hot water. Time your hot water heat up for the best time. Adjust your parameter settings to lower the heat source power output, but being cautious of issues in the winter. And remember, I would only really recommend installers adjust this last setting as heat pumps can be fickle and you will be charged if you mess the controls up. I've been playing with these settings with my cylinder that was installed back in June and we've been measuring our system performance with third party monitoring from Open Energy Monitor since then. And I'm glad to reveal that our average efficiency so far is 460% efficiency. However, I'm still making refinements all the time and this will absolutely increase as time moves forward. That's it for this one and I'll see you in the next one.